<clears throat> now look at this. The apostles' teaching is true, of course, not because it was taught by the apostles, but because their teaching, the teaching of the apostles, is consistent with the scriptures. Why we believe that the Apostles' teaching is the correct and true teaching. Okay? Well, it's not because they are taught by the Apostles, but because the, their teaching is consistent with what the Scripture is teaching. In fact... According to Acts chapter 7 and verse number 10 to 12, the brothers immediately sent Paul and Silas away at night to Berea. And when they arrived, they sent into the Jews, Jewish synagogue. And those, or now those Jews, were more noble than those in Thessalonica. What did they do? After they heard about the teaching, the preaching of Paul and Barnabas or Silas, <clears throat> what they did was that they examine the scriptures daily to see if these things that they were teaching are true. Okay? So, meaning, even if the apostle is the one teaching, his teaching must be checked first in the Word of God, in the Scriptures, in order for the teaching of the Apostle to be what? To be true. Now, the criteria of the teaching is not actually dependent on the person who is teaching, but it is dependent on the Scriptures. The Scriptures is the one who will say your teaching is true and your teaching is false. Okay, you, you follow me on that, okay, on this, <clears throat> meaning it is the scripture, the Bible, who will say whether your teachings are true or not. If your teaching is according, consistent, true to the text, the word of God, then your teachings are true. Whether you are an apostle or not, whether you are a farmer or just a lowly servant, okay, your teaching is true if that is inconsistent with the Word of God. Okay? So it is true when it is consistent with the Word of God. Like, for example, the teachings of popes or the Roman Catholic Church, with all due respect to them, are true not because it was taught by the popes or the church, the Roman Catholic Church, but, okay, how can we say then, finally, that it is true? If we look on the scriptures, if we look on the word of God and check their teachings, if their teachings are, okay, the teachings of the popes are consistent with the teaching of the scriptures, then that teaching is true. But if the teaching of the pope or the church or the cardinals or the bishops okay, or the priests, are not consistent, okay, consistent with the Word of God, that teaching of Pope, priest, is false, is not true, okay? It's not true. Why? How can we say it's false? Okay, how can we say it's true? Based on the teaching of the Word of God. We are not taking their teaching and put it inside the text and put it inside the scriptures in order for them to be true. No, the scripture should be the one guiding them, not their, them guiding the word of God. Okay? Same true with others. Same true with other religions, other teachers. Okay? If the teachings of Mormons, INC, Kibaloi, Jehovah's Witnesses, Islam, 
uh, Buddhist, some other religious um, denominations, if their teachings are not in accordance, consistent with what the with what the Bible said and with what the apostle taught, therefore these religions, teachers teaching this kind of things are not truthful, are not the truth. And they are what? If they are not the truth, they are the what? They are the counterfeit. They are not teaching consistently according to the Word of God. And that's why there is a need to check in, okay? Need to check the teachings of your priest, teaching of your pastor, teaching of your religious leaders. Check them based on the scriptures, not on what they said, like uh, the church that we have talked about, no? church in, uh, in uh, Thessalonica okay? or in Berea, that they check, it doesn't uh, matter whether it was taught by the apostle for them, well, it's no concern, it, it is not really the big deal whether you are uh, the apostle or the disciple or the pope or the priest, what matters most is that is your teaching consistent with the word of God because even if you claim to be the apostle or even if you claim to be the son of God even if you claim to be the Son of God and you teach all of these things, but your teaching is not consistent with the Word of God, your claim is nothing. Your teaching is nothing. Why? Because your teaching, your claim, is not consistent with the Word of God. Okay? And that's really sad in our time today because there are many people, many, many, thousands of them, millions of them, are misguided on this truth, no? misguided on the truth that they are following religious leaders there in a religion whose teachings are not consistent with the Word of God. Okay? In order for your teachings to be, to be true, it should be validated by no other than the script, scripture itself okay and that's really the the standard you know the biblical principle that we can get here so regardless of who are the people teaching be it the pope the president or religious leaders who or whoever famous ones <clears throat> or personalities but if their teachings are not consistent with the scriptures and the apostles teaching these churches and religious leaders and religions are not part of the New Testament church. They're not part of the true church of the Lord Jesus Christ because the true church of the Lord Jesus Christ are what? Devoted to the teaching of the apostles' teaching and doctrine. Why? Because the teaching of the disciples are consistent with the Word of God. And so, those who claim to be apostles, followers of Christ, they should also be, their teaching should also be consistent with the teaching of the Bible. So when an assembly, there, someone said this, when an assembly of people in the body of Christ remove itself from the authority of Scripture, that assembly ceases to be a New Testament church. You're not part of the New Testament church if your teaching is not according, consistent to the teaching of the New Testament believers or even the whole scriptures 